So slap tears are one of those conditions at the shoulder that have been notoriously difficult to diagnose and notoriously difficult to manage. So in this video, I'm going to try and simplify all of that for you. That sounds good. Let's dive in. Hey guys, I'm Khalid. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So when we talk about slap tears, slap stands for superior labral tear from anterior to posterior. Let's dive into some anatomy so we can understand this in more detail. So a slap tear is a tear of the glenoid labrum, which is a cartilaginous ring that completely surrounds the glenoid fossa. The glenoid fossa is the socket that the humerus fits into to create the shoulder joint. And as you can see, it's quite shallow. Therefore, the glenoid labrum allows for the glenoid to be deeper. This improves the stability of the glenohumeral joint whilst also maintaining large amounts of mobility. Now, the long head of biceps tendon attaches to the supraglenoid tubercle, a tubercle superior to the glenoid, but it also partially attaches to the superior ring of the glenoid labrum. It is said that the tendon anchors itself to the labrum. Therefore, when some patients have a significant trauma involving the long head of biceps tendon, it can pull the anchor out of the glenoid labrum, resulting in a slap tear. So what are the causes of slap tears? Well, we can separate them into traumatic and atraumatic. Traumatic causes, like we saw in the anatomy, is going to involve something that pulls that long head of biceps tendon attachment away from the superior labrum. So that might include something like a fall onto an outstretched hand or a heavy inferior traction of the humerus or heavy lifting that's gone wrong. Atraumatic causes tend to focus on repeated micro traumas with the arm in an overhead activity position. So this is going to be something that causes constant repetitive fraying of the long head of biceps tendon from that labral attachment. A common discussion is going to be your baseball players or your NFL throwers, your quarterbacks, who are consistently having their arm in this position and then having to really externally rotate their arm, which is going to really tension that long head of biceps tendon. Now, age is a really interesting factor when it comes to slap lesions. Whilst they can occur in the older age group, the vast majority occur in the population under the age of 40. And we use an analogy of an anchor and a rope to try and describe this. So we talked before about the long head of biceps tendon anchoring itself in to the glenoid labrum, where the anchor is the attachment to the labrum and the rope is the long head of biceps tendon. We commonly describe the situation that in the under 40, when you have a significant trauma, the anchor gets pulled out, i.e. the tendon gets pulled away from the labrum. In the over 40 population, our tendons are a little bit more degenerative, a little bit more vulnerable to injury itself. And therefore, when the older population have a massive trauma, the tendon itself tends to tear whilst the actual anchor stays in place. So that can be a good way of thinking about it. This has been backed up in research when it comes to slap tears. Powell et al. 2012 found that in patients under 40 years old who showed signs and symptoms of instability after a history of acute trauma, repetitive injury, fall on an outstretched arm, or an injury from heavy lifting, slap lesions were found in 52% of these patients. So what are some of the signs that your patient may have had a slap tear? Well, the most common sign in terms of pain is going to be a very deep seated ache at the shoulder. And when we think about the anatomy, that makes sense because the long head of biceps tendon attachment into that superior labrum is very deep to the shoulder joint with lots of other anatomical structures more superficial. You may have picked up from the information from Powell et al. 2012 that instability can be a factor here but you also have patients who don't present with instability. Your patient may or may not also report clunking and clicking at the shoulder. But I think one thing that I've really noticed in my practice is the history of a trauma. Once again, in order for the long head of biceps tendon to be pulled away from that labrum, it's going to need something significant such as a heavy trauma in order to do that. So I'm always listening out to that history of a particular relevant trauma 
in conjunction with that deep-seated ache to help me with my diagnosis. So as well as that all-important subjective history, particularly thinking about the trauma, there are objective tests that we can also use to help our diagnosis. Clark et al. 2019 found that there were three particular objective tests that when combined together as cluster testing produced a sensitivity and specificity of 99%, so very, very good evidence. These three tests are biceps load test one, biceps load test two, and O'Brien's active compression test. Let's take a look at these. So biceps load test one. Here, the examiner places the patient in a supine position and positions their arm so that the shoulder is at 90 degrees of abduction with full shoulder external rotation, the elbow is placed at 90 degrees flexion, and the forearm is in full supination. And you may recognize that this is very similar to the anterior apprehension test for instability of the shoulder. So if the patient's arm is then positioned like so, the examiner places their own hand on the anterior distal forearm of the patient, asking the patient to then flex their elbow against the examiner's resistance. Now this should make the movement less apprehensive and less unstable for the patient. However, if it doesn't, if the pain is either the same or actually increases, this is a positive sign for a slap lesion at the shoulder. So biceps load tendon test two is very similar. Here we ask the patient again to lie in supine and the examiner positions the patient's arm so that it is at 120 degrees of shoulder abduction with 90 degrees elbow flexion and once again full supination of the forearm. Once again the examiner then places their own hand on the distal anterior forearm of the patient asking the patient to reproduce elbow flexion against the examiner's resistance. If this reproduces a feeling of a deep-seated ache at the shoulder, this is also positive for a slap lesion. Finally, we have O'Brien's active compression test. This is where the patient is seated with their shoulder flexed to approximately 90 degrees with full internal rotation with approximately 15 degrees of horizontal adduction. The examiner then places their own hand on the distal part of the patient's forearm and asks the patient to lift their arm up against the examiner's resistance. That's the first part of the test. The test is then repeated but with the patient's arm in a fully supinated position. If the test is positive, you may well find that the first position of full internal rotation reproduces that deep-seated ache at the shoulder, whereas the second position of supination reduces that deep-seated ache. If that occurs, it's a positive result and once again may well indicate a slap lesion for your patient. And again, the key with all of this is that when those three tests are combined together and the results are all positive, there's a 99% sensitivity and specificity indication for a slap tear. So if your patient has subjective and objective signs of a slap lesion, they may go on to have further investigations to clarify the diagnosis further. Now we used to previously use MRI scans a lot here, but actually MRI scans are now thought to not be best practice for diagnosing slap lesions. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, lots of MRI scans will present findings of a slap lesion even in patients who have no symptoms at all. And number two is that MRI scans actually miss slap lesions a lot. Studies from that of Papadopoulos et al. in 2018 showed that when they had 82 cases of slap lesions over a six year period, 70 of those were missed from the preoperative MRI scan and the actual slap tear was not found until the actual arthroscopy surgery when the patient was on the operating table. So this just demonstrates to us that actually examination arthroscopy is a better indicative tool for diagnosis than an MRI scan. So how do we manage slap lesions? Well, that depends on the severity of the injury, which Snyder broke down for us in his classification from grade one to grade four. So a grade one lesion involves mild to moderate fraying of the superior labrum. Here, the long head of biceps tendon stays intact. This is present in a high percentage of the population, even with no symptoms. 
This shows that major intervention isn't always indicated and you may well find that this classification is present in your atraumatic group. Type 2 represents your most common type of slap tear where the superior labrum and the long head of biceps tendon gets detached from the glenoid. Type 3 and type 4 are said to be very rare. In type 3, the long head of biceps tendon stays intact, but we get a bucket handle type tear of the labrum. And in grade 4, we have a bucket handle tear of the labrum that also includes the long head of biceps tendon. So once the grade of your patient's slap tear has been established, treatment algorithms such as that of Brockmeyer et al. 2016 can be used to establish the best treatment method for them. Brockmeyer et al. found that if your patient has a grade 1 slap lesion, then the preferred management options should be physiotherapy and conservative management in the first instance, with a secondary option of an arthroscopic debridement if physiotherapy is unsuccessful. And for those with slap lesions between grade 2 and grade 4, Brockmeyer et al. established that surgical options are the best management method. Here they established that things such as a slap repair or a long head of biceps tenodesis, where the long head of biceps tendon is detached from the superior labrum and instead reinserted at the proximal shoulder as some of the best surgical options available. But of course, that discussion has to be had between your patient and the surgeon. So when it comes to your physiotherapy management, in the early stages, we're probably gonna be trying to use range of movement exercises to get our patient's range of movement back on track, coupled with some good education and some analgesia from their doctor to make sure their pain's under control. Then the work really starts in terms of strengthening. And for this, I tend to focus on three particular principles. Number one is about strengthening the posterior rotator cuff to try and make sure that the posterior shoulder can take more of the load. Number two is about gradually reloading the biceps because of course it's the long head of biceps tendon which is one of the key structures involved in a slap lesion. And number three is about proprioception. We know that the glenoid labrum has a role in proprioception of the shoulder and therefore it's really important that we target that. So for that posterior cuff strengthening, I tend to focus on exercises like sideline external rotation, as you can see here, a face pull type exercise, as you can see here, and a straight arm pull down, as you can see here. I tend to focus on reps of about eight to 10 for each of these across two to three sets. For gradually reloading the biceps, I might start with things like a scaption raise, combined with the Arnie shoulder press, combined with some good old bicep curls. Again, I might think about reps between eight to 10 across two to three sets, but I often try and bring these in every other day to allow plenty of time for that long head of biceps tendon to recover from one session to the next. And then in terms of proprioception, you might think about things like some slow and gradual plank taps where your patient is in a press up position and they gradually tap one shoulder and then the other. And I also really like the drop catch exercise, which is shown to be a great exercise for general proprioception of the shoulder. For these, I might focus on 30 seconds two sets, again, once every other day. And another really important thing to finish off with with any of your rehab is to involve the lower limb as well for the shoulder. There's so much evidence out there that shows that when we have strong lower limb, it can really help facilitate the upper limb. So don't forget your squats, your lunges, and doing exercises on one leg to try and improve the lower limb strength too. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please smash that like button to support us. And if you want even more from us, check out our website at clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid Maidan. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.